So you are wondering what causes myopia. So first I'm going to go over several claimed causes of it that are pretty common. And then I'm going to explain what really causes it. So number one, genetics. Now heredity does play a role in your personality, your predispositions to certain diseases and conditions. But if you look at some things like um, the uh, societies like the Eskimos that weren't integrated into Western society until in uh, recent decades, really, they were more or less isolated up there. When the kids started going to our schools, the incidence of myopia went way up and their parents and grandparents were not myopic. And you'll see that a lot anywhere where, um, especially now, I mean, it's on the rise everywhere, but um, you'll see kids get it without any kind of genetic history of it in their family. And then number two, uh, close work, uh, using your computer, reading. This is a really popular one. Um, and you do see it among like university students a lot. Um, they do have a higher uh, rate, uh, higher incidence of uh, myopia than uh, the general population of kids that age. And there is a certain amount of evidence to support this. One interesting thing is that myop myopia correlates to very close up reading um, and continuous reading without any breaks, or um, in other words, the intensity of the reading um, in a certain way but not the time spent doing it, the overall time spent doing it. And also people with myopia get more transient myopia after uh, some intense reading or other near work. In other words, they um, people notice a lot, people with myopia will notice a lot that when they're doing close-up work for a while, they'll look up and uh, the distance will be more blurry than before, at least for a while. And that's what we're talking about, transient myopia. But people with normal vision, when uh, when they do the same thing, they're reading a lot and they look up, look, their vision really um, doesn't get worse like that, which points to the cause being more about the way they read or the way they do things rather than just um, blaming it on the distance something is from your eyes, um, something unavoidable like that. And also people will sometimes combine the theories genetics and near work, say it's either um, it's either mostly near work and a little bit genetics or the other way around. But any way you look at it, they, you know, to try to fit all the cases, but any way you look at it there, it really doesn't fit enough of the cases very well. It doesn't explain things very well. There's too many um, unexplained things. And then number three would be nutrition, things like diabetes, especially the blood sugar level is supposed to make the lens of the eye swell. So yeah, sure, it does happen. But obviously not everybody is diabetic. And then uh, number four, there can be other physiological conditions like the incidence of asthma and other allergies are actually higher um, with people with myopia. And number five, lack of sunlight. There was a recent study, I think uh, about a year ago, there was, um, they checked out a bunch of kids, a bunch of them uh, kind of stayed indoors a lot, and um, the other segment of the population went outdoors, and they figured, well, it's because of the sunlight, um, and the ones that uh, played outdoors more had a lower um, incidence of myopia. So um, sunlight, I think, is important, and you know, there's a lot of research to support that. It's an important nutritional factor, really. Um, it's kind of necessary for the eyes to grow and develop, but it's um, you got to control for a lot of other factors there, and I don't think they did that. And um, it's really not again, it's not the whole story. Uh, number six would be lack of uh, physical activity. There is a, a study I found where the uh, the oxygen supply in the blood is lower in people with myopia than uh, people without. So that's interesting. And some of these things kind of go together, you'll notice. You kind of, you know, the same type of people who, um, especially these last two, if you're, if you're really physically active, well, a lot of that, a lot of that you're doing it outside. And, um, so you're probably not, um, studying 
from books as much. But the clue here is in how it's in developed countries where myopia is increasing, particularly in urban areas where kids are spending a lot of time in school. They got rigorous schooling programs, um, even within the same country versus, you know, rural versus urban areas like uh, Taiwan versus mainland China. Huge difference. But at the same time, some kids manage to avoid it and some uh, start to develop it and they, and they get better. Usually when it starts is when they're in grade school or high school um, or even university or else it's um, increasing by then. But other people are seemingly born with it or develop it at a really early age when they're toddlers and uh, that was the case with me. But everything points to school being a huge factor. And it's not so much the reading or other schoolwork. It's the psychological factor of the stress and the response to the stress, which isn't totally predictable. People respond in different ways. Some people have a tendency toward myopia when they're stressed, when they have to deal with a lot of really boring subjects in school. Having to sit in a desk for, uh, they get some breaks, but for hours throughout the day, it's, it's not a good thing for kids to have to do that. It's not comfortable for them. And it's important to note that developing myopia isn't necessarily associated with close work only. Kids might have trouble seeing the whiteboard or projector screen, or there might be other psychological factors that make them feel stressed when looking at more distant objects. And the same kind of things happen with adults when they get cooped up in a situation that they really hate and they deal with it as best they can and kind of buckle down and get through it, but they don't handle the stress in the right way. They end up, um, they can't, they don't stay relaxed. They end up uh, tensing their body, developing a lot of chronic tension and it goes to their eyes and they end up using their eyes in ways that causes more tension and their eyes become uncomfortable seeing becomes more of an arduous task and their eyes start to not focus as well and so they have to force their eyes uh, somehow to focus even more by putting more tension on them remember vision really happens in the mind not the eyes it uses a combination of data from the eyes along with memory and some good guesswork or imagination to construct the images. When people get stressed out and react in this way, it hinders their mind's ability to work as efficiently as it can. And we know this, and we know that when you're relaxed, you can think better. And when you're stressed out, you can get to a point where you can hardly think at all. So your mind isn't able to do, um, because as your mind isn't able to do the powerful and intricate job of visual processing as well as before. And it doesn't focus your eyes as well. When this continues for too long or too often, your visual mind gets into a perpetual state of reduced functioning. You can't visualize as well. And vision is visualization. You might think of visualization as something you do with your eyes closed, but uh, like visualizing something that's not there, but it's it's the same thing. Seeing and visualizing, it's all it's all the same process. There are other aspects of this too, but they all get hardened into the personality, and then the personality in turn reinforces these bad habits. It's hard to say in what order these things happen in. The point is they happen. They all go together. And all these theories of the cause of myopia, I mentioned physiological factors, sunlight and everything, they can have some effect, but the researchers are missing the point. They're barking up the wrong tree. They have a mechanical worldview where X causes Y or Y or X and Y causes Z. They don't take into account free will and the power of the human mind to make different choices that cause different physiological outcomes. The cool thing about this situation, though, is you can reverse these types of bad habits I mentioned. The right way to break bad habits is to concentrate on the good habits. We have learned enough about the right way to use the eyes that all this can be reversed with the methods I promote. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated as I come out with more material.